Welcome to Data Bit Technologies. I am Abbas Shah and this is the part 3 of SQL Server video series. Previously in part 1 we have seen how to connect to SQL Server using SQL Server Management Studio. And in part 2 we have seen how to create alter and drop databases. In this session we will learn how to create tables. And how to enforce primary and foreign key constraints between those tables. In this session we will create two tables. Person and gender. Now within this person table I want to mark this ID column as the primary key column. And in the gender table I want this ID column to be marked as a primary key column. Now what is the use of primary key the? The primary key basically is used to identify uniquely each record in that table. For example in table person if I have two Marys. How do I uniquely identify each one of them using this primary key column? So if there is another record for Mary probably she will have an idea of 7. So 2 is for this Mary and 7 is for another Mary that we are gonna have. Okay so primary key is basically used to uniquely identify each record within that table. Alright to create a table in SQL Server, we have got two options. One is graphically using SQL Server Management Studio and the other one is basically to write a query. Now first we will see how to create a table graphically using SQL Server Management Studio. So let's flip back so now within the databases in the previous session, we have seen how to create a sample database. So if I expand the sample database, you see there's a folder called tables folder. And if I expand that we don't have any tables yet, because we haven't created any. Now if I want to create a new table, I can right click this folder and say new table and we want to create a person table with these columns, ID name, email and gender ID. So let's create those. So this is the table designer window. So what's the column name that we want, the column name as ID and the data type. If you look at the ID, it's number, it's an integer. So I want the data type to be integer. And this column allow nulls? No it shouldn't. Because I want this column to uniquely identify each row within this table so I don't want to allow nulls. Remove the checkbox. And I want this column to be the primary key column of this table and how do I do that? Right click on that column and select set primary key. So what have you done? You have created this ID column we have specified the data type and we said it's not going to allow nulls. And we mark this column as a primary key column. And what's the next column in our table name column? And the data type of this one is going to be in varchar and we also have to specify the length. The number of characters, let's say I want 50 characters, and do you want to allow nulls? No. Every person in my table needs to have a name, so remove the checkbox. And the next column we have is email. And again this is going to be in varchar 50 characters in length and I don't want to allow nulls. And the final column that we want is the gender ID. So gender ID is going to be an integer. And I can allow null. For example I don't know the gender of few people in that case their gender ID will be null. So I want to create this gender ID column so gender ID and I want this to be integer and I want to allow nulls. That's it we are done now. Right click here. And save table 1. And I want to call this table person table. So basically what we have done now we have used the designer and created this person table. So you look at this this is the person table. And if you expand the columns folder, you should see all the columns ID, name, email, gender ID. And if you look at this ID column has a key symbol next to that, indicating that, this is the primary key. There is also this abbreviated form PK, primary key. It's an integer data type. And it doesn't allow nulls. On the other hand, if you look at gender ID, it's an integer column and it does allow nulls. Alright so we have just seen how to create a table graphically using the designer. Now let us see how to create this gender table using SQL Query. In the previous session when we created the database you know we used the command. Create, database, 
database name. Now we want to create a table so we will say create table and the name of the table. So create table. And what's the table but I want to create is gander. Now this table is going to have how many columns? Two columns, ID and gender columns. And we want the ID to be integer column. And we don't want to allow nulls. And we want this column to be the primary key column of this table. How do we do that? So I want the column as ID the data type as integer and I don't want to allow nulls. So not now. And I want this column to be primary key so primary key. So that's the first column. The next column that I want to create is the gender column itself. So gender and the data type of this column is going to be nvarchar50. And I don't want to allow nulls, so not null. And this is not going to be a primary key. Remember, the table can have only one primary key. Now execute this command. So command completed successfully. If you come here and refresh the tables folder, you should see gender table. And if I expand that. And if I expand the columns. There you should see ID is the primary key column. It's an integer data type and doesn't allow nulls. It's gender varchar 50 and it doesn't allow nulls as well. So what have we done until now? We have created these two tables. And marked these two columns as primary keys for these two tables. Okay, now what else we want to do? We know that this gender ID column. We want to mark this gender ID column as the foreign key in this table. So how do we do that? Again, you can do that graphically, or you can do that using a query. First we'll see how to do that graphically. And then we'll use a query. What is the advantage of foreign key basically? Let's talk about that practically. First let's create this foreign key relationship. And before that, let's enter some data to the these tables now. In the next session we will see how to enter data using queries, but for now we'll use the designer to enter data. And to do that, right click on the table. And click on edit top 200 rows. Before we do that for person table, let's do it for gender table. Right click on the table and select edit top 200 rows. Okay, now let's say I want to enter 1, male, 2, female. Let's okay. A simple sample data that I have. 1 is male and 2 is female. And let's do it for person table. Edit top 200 rows. The ID and the person's name. Let's say John. His email let's say j.com and his gender ID let's say 1. Okay now this is fine so John's gender ID is 1. What is John's gender? He's a male. On the other hand let's say I enter another person maybe Mary and m.com. But here I'm saying gender ID is 99. Now look at this. That value is accepted by the SQL server. Now if somebody asks, can you tell me what is Mary's gender? You're looking. Mary's gender ID is 99 and if you go to the genders table, you don't have 99 here. So what is Mary's gender? You don't know. Basically here the data that you have in the person table is not correct. Somebody maybe by mistake, they have entered this 99 and SQL server accepted that value. So if you look at this data, the database integrity is lost. Your data is not correct and there's something wrong with this data. But on the other hand, if we have established the relationship between these two tables, the foreign key relationship, it wouldn't have allowed you to enter 99 here. But on the other hand, it would have allowed null. So if you enter null, what is Mary's gender? It's null, which means we don't know. They haven't provided their gender information. But if somebody is able to enter maybe 99 or 101 like this, this data doesn't make any sense. Because gender ID 101 does not exist in the gender stable, and we don't know what is Mary's gender. So the database integrity is lost. So how do we enforce the database integrity, using this foreign key relationship, foreign key constraints? 
So let us see how to add foreign key constraint. Let's close this table. Let's close this table as well. Now what do we want to do? In present table we want to mark this column as foreign key constraint. Let's do that graphically. In this person table I want this column gender ID to be marked as a foreign key. So right click on the table. And select design. And within the designer window of this table, this is the gender ID column that we want to mark as a foreign key. So right click on that and select relationships. This shows up if foreign key relationships window. Click here add. Now you should see tables and columns specification here. Click there and you should see an ellipsis button, click that button. This is where you'll have to specify which is the primary key table. Which is the foreign key table. And we know that the primary key table is the gender table. And in gender table I want to look up the ID column. And the foreign key table is person table. And within person table, gender ID is the foreign key column. So click OK. If you say close and save the table, what's gonna happen this gender ID will be marked as foreign key constraint. But let's do that using a query rather than using the designer. Let's not save this. If I want to create a foreign key constraint using a query rather than the designer, there's a general formula for that. Alter table and foreign key table. Look at this alter table, which table we want to alter, person table. So let's try that. So alter table, person. That's the table we want to alter. Why because in this table I want to mark gender ID column, the foreign key column. And what do I want to do? I want to add a constraint. What type of constraint? Foreign key constraint. Add constraint. And then give it a name. What is the name of this constraint? You know I'm creating foreign key constraint on this person table. So, person. On which column am I creating that in? On gender ID column. With gender ID, and this is going to be a foreign key constraint. So that's the name of the constraint. And next what we need to do. We need to specify which column in this table. And that column you know which table which other table is it going to reference. And which column in that other table. So if you look back so foreign key. And we need to specify now. Which column in person table is going to be the foreign key. And the person table's gender ID. So we specify gender ID is the column that we want to mark as a foreign key. But then if this is a foreign key, then it has to be a primary key sum of the table. So which is that other table, in which we have to look up the primary key column? So in our case, it's going to be the gender table. So this column is going to reference general table and ID column. So references which table? Is gender, and which column in the table? Is ID column. So if you look at that primary key column, if I execute this query, what's gonna happen? It's gonna create a foreign key constraint with this name. So execute that so command completed successfully. Now if I come to the person table, refresh that, and the expand the person. And if I go into the keys table, Look at that there is this person underscore gender ID underscore FK created. This constraint basically created foreign key constraint. And if you right click on that. And if you say modify. You should see exactly the same thing that we had specified here. If you come here. Tables and column specifications. Click the ellipsis button. You should see that the primary key table is gender. And the column is ID and the foreign key table is person gender ID. So you can do that either graphically, using the designer. So what we have done until now. We have created these two tables. Mark the ID columns as primary keys for both the tables. And we mark gender ID in person table as foreign key column. Now since we have marked this column as a foreign key, now this column only allow values if they exist in gender table. 
otherwise the value doesn't make sense. For example, for Rob, if I enter 99, what is Rob's gender? It doesn't make sense. So let's check that value, you try to insert and update that. And if that value does not exist in the primary key table, it will flag that as an error and that it doesn't allow you to enter. In this video, we have learned how to create tables, how to specify primary keys and how to enter data in tables using graphical user interfaces. We have also learned how important foreign key constraint is for database integrity and how to enforce foreign key constraints using graphical interface as well as query. In next video, we will learn more details about constraints enforcements to ensure database integrity. Thank you for watching this video. Have a nice day.